Okay, so on a Dell Optiplex, if you want to swap this over to another case, then the, it, one of the issues that you're going to run into is the power button cable failure. When you boot up the computer, you'll keep getting this error. It'll stop right over here. The reason why it says hard drive not found is because I don't have a hard drive in there. But this is one of the errors that you're going to get over and over by using these OEM <coughs> Dell Optiplex cases. So if you look at the, the power button switch, if I get this crap out of here, give me a second, there we go. You see it's five pins. If I can get this to focus, there we go. Got three on the top, two on the bottom, blank, depending on how you look at it. And if you flip it over this way, the one with the blank ends up being on the top and three on the bottom. So yeah, we'll talk more about that. But apparently these four wires, they get some type of signal from the, to the motherboard or send some signal to the motherboard. Don't know the scientific crazy terms for this, but apparently they send a signal and that's what tells the motherboard, hey, power button is fine, whatever. So Dell and their infinite wisdom decided, hey, if we come up with this system, then they're gonna have these errors. They can't swap the case over, whatever, but we can bypass it. We can bypass it. So when you have this error, you have two ways you can approach this and handle this. Uh, number one, the original way, way that I did on my Optiplex 3010 video, which I'll post a video to it, you plug it in, uh, you keep this power connector, you plug it in, and then what you do is you tap into uh, the two connectors on this way, looking at this way, it's going to be on the right hand side, which I think is the black and yellow. I just went ahead, cut this wire loom open, tapped into it, and after I tapped into it, I was able to run a power switch into it, turned it on. I don't have that error no more. And that's what worked on that one. Then this one, I just tucked it somewhere and wire tied it into the case. It's like you never knew about it. So that's one way to do it. Um, I recently got a comment from somebody saying that they threw away their case. How can they bypass this error? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So there's actually a way to bypass this. And if you look at my little rat nest right over there, we'll talk about that. Um, there's a way to actually trick the motherboard into thinking that, hey, the power button cable is still there without it being there. I want to talk about that. So let's come back over here. And let's look at my little diagram. One, two, three, four, five. This is the blank space that we talked about. This is going to be our reference so you know where to position it. And these numbers, they're not any official numbers. It's just a guide that I can use to kind of reference it to anybody who's watching this video. So pins two and five, if you look at pins two and five, if you short them out together, pins two and five, they actually fire up the computer. Okay. Pins one, two, three, and four, apparently they do some amber LED, they do some self test, I don't know. Really don't care too much about that. But what I have found is, if you take pins one, three, four, and five, take these together, wire them up, and to have them into one single wire, and then you take pins two, and you touch pins two to this group of wire, you actually tap a, a power switch into it, and you can actually turn it on. Okay, sounds a little complicated, but um, it'll be a lot easier when we take that and we put that on the bench. So pretty much you're going to take pins one, three, four, five, wire them up together, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Then you have pin two. So you have this nest together and this pin right over here, and then if you tap it into a power switch, that's what's turn it on. When you turn it on, I found out that it actually tricks the computer into thinking that the power button cable is still there. And that's the easiest way that I found to trick it now if you want to wire the amber led the power led that's up to you i mean on the computers i build for people they don't care about that light they like the rgb that's inside the case or whatever fancy things i decide to do with it so <clears throat> that's up to you you could research that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this motherboard apart we're going to strip it down and i'm actually going to place it on a bench somewhere around over here and that way i could give you an in-depth view of actually what i saw and how it, what it does and what it takes to actually wire it up it's really easy it's real simple i'll actually give you a suggestion that i wish i would have done that would have made it a lot easier so let's go ahead and uh, strip this computer out
bench set up over here, my nice fancy Asus book. Just if anybody recommends a good bench, um, comment below. Let me know your recommendations. I need to get one that's a little, a lot better than this one. So uh, just give me a comment. Let me know what you think of good ones that you may have used or experienced. So I'm going to try to record this the best I can. All right. So as you can see, those are the pins that I was talking about. Two in the top, got the space, and then three in the bottom. What I went ahead and did was I went ahead and just broke the things around it just so it could kind of give you a better shot of uh, what we're looking at over here. And let's see if I get some better lighting. Um, I think I can. Hold on. Oh, there we go. I think I got it. Okay, so that's probably a lot better, maybe. All right, so that, I went ahead and just broke the little things, uh, the little plastic things that hold it. These pins, they are, they are smaller than your typical pins, and it's real tight to get them in there. So I just went ahead and broke them and just kind of got them out the way. If you have the little single pin connectors, those are a lot easier to use than using these, um, these two pins. If you get the single ones, it's just a lot easier to do. In fact, it's a little overkill on some. So what I figured out is if you go ahead, and let's just make sure this thing is not powered up. Okay, good. If you go ahead, and I'm going to try to demonstrate this the best I can. I'm going to have to probably put the camera down. But if you go ahead and jump pins two and five, which I'm going to try to get that right over here. Okay. You jump pins two and five. And then you take this connector and you pop it right next there in three and four, which is going to be right next to it. Let's see if I can get that in there. Okay. And then that last final pin, if I could get that right over there in that shot, there you go. <coughs> Just go ahead and pop a pin in there. Uh, excuse my cruddy camera angle. Okay. So I got everything wired up. So as you can see, everything is tied up into together, all the pins minus pin five or pin or pin two, <coughs> sorry, pin two. So now what we do is we go ahead, we turn this thing on. which is gonna turn on by itself because that's just what this computer does. And we should, when it boots up, we should get the, air, uh, no, we should not get the power button error. So let's let this thing do its thing. Okay, as you can see, we got the computer powered up and we don't have that power button uh, cable failure anymore. We got the front IO because I don't have that one in, but that's actually gonna be done on a separate video. Uh, if you look at it over here, there's a whole bunch of pins and um, I just need to figure out some type of wiring for that. So um, just stay tuned and just make sure you hit the notification bell. So when that video comes out, you can stay aware of it and uh, check that video out. But as you can see, the power button failure is done. It's gone. So we got all the wires. They're wrapped up. One, three, four and five I've like talked about. And then pin five, uh, pin two is actually going to touch it. So this actually represents our power switch. So if I actually technically, if I touch this right over here, if you look, Yep, by touching that, it turns it on, turns it off. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn it on. If I could get that thing to line up. This is so hard to do one-handed. Okay. All right, computer should be turning on. There we go. So computer's booting up. And as you can see, the error is gone. So real simple and easy. Just reviewing real quick. Pins two and five is your power switch. Remember, blank, one, two, three, four, five, however you want to number it. If you take all the pins minus one of the power pins, even if you make pin number five your uh, other power pin or whatever, it's still gonna work. But you loop them together, one, three, four, five. Take pin number two, touch it to this rat nest of wires like we did, and that's your power button. So now, in this case over here, I mean, you could clean this up, you could solder it. What I would do different is I would use the single wire uh, pins, which I don't have any, or I wish I did, but I would actually use the single wire pins and I would solder it, uh, solder them together, make that a nice clean solder joint. And then this right over here, I would solder it into the power switch and just kind of do that. I mean, that is the easy, cheap way that I could think to do it. I mean, there are some people that have, that have some fancier things. I'll post a couple of links below on some other guys who just came up with some better ideas than I, but this is like the easiest guide that I could think of. Anybody who's just trying to do this right at home, doesn't have a ton of money or not a ton of money, but doesn't have a ton of time or just a ton of uh, different ways to figure this out. So 
get that in there in the shot right here. And like I said, you take this, you hit it, watch, see, and turns it off. Okay, hit it again, turn it on. So, a uh, quick tip, solder these together, um, solder the two leads for the power switch into it, and it'll work. So, um, the front I.O., that's going to be a separate video in itself. Uh, another thing too is these Dell proprietary fans. They have a proprietary fan um, connector. I'll put a link below on a adapter. So if you want to put in your own type of fan, that's what I did on my Dell Optiplex uh, 780 build. So 780, 760, one of the builds. On the Optiplex, that's what I just went ahead and did. I just got that fan adapter for it. So real quick and easy. Um, the front I.O., you can, like I said, I'm gonna try to come up with a pinout, but if you don't can't figure out the pinout or don't have anything for that, just plug this in and either uh, try to adapt it some way to your case or just tuck it away in the case. That's what I did on the last one because it was real small and easy. So um, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. If it does, let me know. If you need more explanation, just uh, message me, leave comments down below, and hopefully this could help somebody with this um, build. So thanks for watching.